Hey everybody, this is Mobile 12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst for this video. I'll be specifically talking about nitriles. Um, this is a continuation of my discussion on acid derivatives. This is actually, this will actually be my final discussion, excuse me, on acid derivatives because this is, con this is the conclusion, so to speak, of that topic. So, quick little update, Facebook fan page, link in the description box below, show your love and support for your boy, like the fan page, tell your friends and family about it. Um, and that's pretty much it in regards to the update. Uh, let's see. Uh, so basically, my videos are going to start focusing now. After I finish this video and this topic, acid deriv derivatives, it's going to start focusing on stuff like um, alpha alkylation, alpha halogenation, those aldol reactions, Claisen reactions, all that good stuff. And we're actually coming to a close on the topic of second semester organic chemistry. And then now I will revert back after I finish all those videos. I will revert back to first semester OCHEM, and then we'll focus on that. Okay, so you'll see a lot of uh, cool and neat stuff in uh, regards to first semester organic chemistry. Um, so let's get started. Again, there's three reactions for um, that we'll be focusing on in regards to nitriles. There are more, but we're just going to focus on these three. Um, a nitrile. Let me just raise the star. Then the uh, the nitrile. Uh, basically takes the form I've, I've drawn here. You have a carbon that's wedged between a, a carbon group, which I represented by an R, and a nitrogen. Now in this case, the carbon-nitrogen bonding is actually a triple bond instead of being a single bond. So that's what a nitrile looks like. Again, the carbon wedged between a, another carbon group and a nitrogen, and it has a triple bond between the carbon-nitrogen. Okay, And those are lone pairs if you're wondering what those dots are. That's a lone pair. So again, three reactions we'll be focusing on. So let's get started. Again, I'm not going to focus on the reaction mechanism. In the near future, I'll probably do some videos on that. But for now, I'm just going to focus on the reaction itself, how to go from starting material to product, and some little neat tricks in order for you guys to draw the product. Okay. So the first reaction, we have a nitrile reacting with water under acidic conditions or water under uh, basic conditions. It doesn't really matter which what case we're dealing with. Nonetheless, you'll form the same product in either case. Um, so, in order for us to draw the product, okay, in order for us to draw the product, what we need to do is, first off, the product is going to be a carboxylic acid, and you guys should be able to identify that because if you've seen the other acid derivative videos of mine, you've noticed that in order for us to draw a carboxylic acid, in order to make a carboxylic acid from an acid derivative, we usually use one of these types of reagents. So it should be you should be pretty comfortable with seeing this type of reagent and be able to make an educated guess as to what product you'll form. So again in this case when you have a nitrile reacting with one of these types of conditions you'll form a carboxylic acid in this first case. So in order to draw our carboxylic acid what you need to do is convert this carbon nitrogen triple bond to a carbon oxygen double bond which will be your carbonyl of your carboxylic acid. Once you do that, all you have to do then is just add an OH group to this carbon here to finish off your carboxylic acid, and there you have it. So let's draw that out. Let's see how that works. Again, we're not going to touch this R group. So here's our R group. There's our carbon. Like I said, we're going to convert this into a carbonyl. And then now all we have to do is add an OH to this carbon here, and we have our carboxylic acid. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, typically we don't see a carboxylic acid drawn as such because it looks kind of funky. So what I'm what I'm going to do? I'm not gonna I'm not changing anything by doing this. All I'm going to do is rotate the molecule in such a way where I can have the carboxylic acid um, presented in a more logical fashion. So rotate and flip it actually. So here's our carbon. There's our carbonyl. There's our OH. There's our R. That's the way we typically see a carboxylic acid. And that's the first reaction, very simple, very straightforward. The second reaction, we have a nitrile reacting with lithium aluminum hydride in the first step, and in the second step, we have this hydrolyzation step. Um, we, have the per we have the presence of water. Um, this is very straightforward reaction again. Remember that lithium aluminum hydride is a reducing reagent. Okay, This is LiAlH4. Um, we've seen this used in, a, in many reactions. <clears throat> Let's see. So in this case, we're going to form a amine. So when reacting lithium aluminum hydride, 
this set of reagents with a nitrile will form a amine. Okay, you'll form a primary amine every single time. Okay, and so how it will look like in order to draw the product, which will be our amine, all we have to do is reduce the bonds between carbon and nitrogen, in this case right here, by two, add two H's to the nitrogen, add two H's to the carbon here, okay? Again, I'm not focusing on the reaction mechanism, I'm just showing you how to go from starting material to product. We're forming an amine, so our amine, we add two H's to the carbon, right? Because we have to fulfill the octet of the carbon, the octet rule. And to nitrogen, like I said, we add two H's, so I'll write it as NH2. There's our primary amine. Very straightforward. Okay, and I think we're going to be finished pretty quickly with this video, so let's, let's uh, take it a little bit slower for the final reaction, because it kind of is a little bit confusing. The third reaction, what we have is a nitrile reacting with the Grignard reagent. Okay, um, the first step, <clears throat> we have this we have the Grignard reagent, and the second step we have this hydrolyzation step. So in the first step, okay, what we form is a imine anion intermediate. If you recall, I made a video on imines. If you guys don't know how to make an imine and what that is all about, check it out. But check that video out. But nonetheless, an imine is basically. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So, so let me I'll go through the process and I'll explain what it looks like as we're going through that process. So in the first step, what we have to do in order to draw our intermediate, I'm kind of I'm gonna reroute this arrow. So in the first step, we form an imine anion intermediate. So what we form, what we have is this R group from the Grignard reagent adds to this carbon of the nitrile. Okay, this carbon right here. So let's draw that. Adds right there. I put a little apostrophe there to represent, so that to show that this carbon group here from the uh, Grignard reagent doesn't have to be the same as the R group right here, the carbon group there. Okay, so again, what we do, this R group adds to this carbon right here. Through the process, we lose one of the bonds from the carbon nitrogen triple bond. So now we have a carbon nitrogen double bond, and effectively we have two lone pairs instead of one lone pair on, on nitrogen. Now, the reason why we call it an imine, first off, this is the typical structure of an imine, carbon-nitrogen double bond with some R groups hanging off of it. But the reason why we call it an imine anion intermediate is because it forms, it has a negative charge on the nitrogen. Okay, that's, that's the intermediate we form from the first step imine anion intermediate and in the second step we finally form our ketone okay again so in this case when we're reacting nitrile with this set of reagents we form a ketone but it goes through this intermediate process that this process I'm showing you down below so we form our ketone and all we have to do to draw our ketone is replace this nitrogen here with an oxygen and we get our ketone so again R carbon there's an R prime to represent a different type of carbon group and then oxygen so there's our ketone the second step is that hydrolyzation step which helps convert this imine to this ketone by replacing that nitrogen with that negative charge and those lone pairs to this oxygen I'll draw the lone pairs for the heck of it and there you have it your ketone and that's pretty much it for nitriles I hope all that made sense let's do a quick little uh, you know run through all these reactions again Excuse me. So again, the first reaction, we have a nitrile reacting with water under acidic conditions or water under basic conditions. You can use either or. You form a carboxylic acid. All you have to do to draw your carboxylic acid is convert this piece right here to a carbonyl, add an OH group, and that's what we did to get our carboxylic acid. Second reaction, we have a nitrile reacting with lithium aluminum hydride. And in the second step, we have this hydrolyzation step. <clears throat> um, what we do is we convert um, this nitrile to a amine um, and basically what we do is re reduce the bonds between carbon and nitrogen by two where we get a carbon nitrogen single bond add two H's to that carbon, add two H's to that nitrogen and we get our primary amine 
Third and final reaction we'll be focusing on is a nitrile reacting with the Grignard reagent. Second step, hydrolyzation step. Um, in the first step, we form this imine anion intermediate. It's imine because it has this typical structure that I've shown here, and anion because it has a negative charge. And the second step, which is the hydrolyzation step, we form our ketone, replacing that nitrogen with that O. And there you have it. That pretty much concludes this first part on nitriles, and in the second part, I'll go over a few reactions as examples. Okay, so stay tuned.